In this video, we're going to talk about FluentBeat, which is a logs and metrics processor tool. As you know, all applications need logging. And the main use case for logging is data analysis. Something breaks in the application, you check the logs to see what caused the error. Or you're trying to reproduce a bug, and by looking at the application logs, you can understand what happened. Or simply to have an overview of what your application is doing. Logs can come from different places. Logs are produced by applications, but also server processes and so on. So you have different sources of logs. And FluentBeat is actually a general purpose log processor, meaning it can read and process logs from all these different sources. But note that in addition to collecting logs, FluentBeat also has metrics collection capabilities for embedded Linux systems. For example, it can gather metrics on CPU, memory, storage, etc. And because it's general purpose, FluentBeat can be deployed on any environment, like bare metal servers, virtual machines, embedded devices, and containers. However, FluentBeat is used the most for processing logs in Kubernetes clusters. Now, the challenge of logging in complex environments like Kubernetes is that you have many different applications which produce logs in different formats. Each application is running in containers, which run in pods, which then run on Kubernetes nodes. So in addition to the log message and the application name itself, we have all this additional information about where the log is coming from. So if you have five replicas of the same application, you want to know which pod replica on which node produced this log. This means the challenge is to collect this data from different sources and then process it, like parse all the values and identify where they are coming from as well as what the actual log contents are and parse them in key value pairs so that they can eventually be stored in Elastic or Kafka so that finally we can see the logs and do data analysis on them. So as you see, the log processor has a very important but also challenging job. Now processing the data, of course, needs resources. The log processor needs enough memory, storage, and CPU resources to collect the logs, then parse the logs and filter them. And this should all be done as a background task, right? It shouldn't interfere with your main application's performance because then we have compromised the speed and performance of our application for a proper logging mechanism. And of course, the requirement for resources increases when you have applications with high throughput, meaning producing high amounts of logs. So as you see, the log processor not only needs to collect and process logs, but it needs to do it in a performant and resource efficient way. So we need a lightweight and high performance log processor. And one of the most popular ones today happens to be FluentBeat. So how does FluentBeat work? FluentBeat uses input plugins to read the logs from the data sources. For example, if you need to read log files, you need a plugin to read from log files. If you're going to receive messages over TCP, you need an input plugin that listens for messages over TCP. And as mentioned at the beginning, FluentBeat supports many different input sources. FluentBeat also has input plugins for metrics data collection. For example, it supports statsd and collectd input plugins, but also supports collecting metrics on the host systems, CPU, memory, and disk. Once logs are collected and read, FluentBeat will process them. And of course, depending on the log format, we would need to parse them differently. For that, FluentBeat has different filters and parsers. Filters can be used to change the log record or even add some additional metadata to it, like pod ID or namespace where the log is coming from and so on. You can also use filters to drop or ignore some records. To make the filtering even more flexible, in FluentBeat, you can use custom Lua scripts as filters to modify and process the records. In addition to all of this, one unique advanced feature that FluentBeat has is SQL stream processing. This allows users to write SQL queries on the logs or metrics to do aggregations, calculations, even time series predictions. 
This is super useful if you need to calculate an average, max or min before sending the data to the storage or count the number of times a message appears or aggregate data to reduce data costs. The best part about the SQL stream processing is that no database is required and no indices are required. Everything runs on the same lightweight, high performance process. So you still keep that high performance and resource efficiency of FluentBit. After the logs are processed, FluentBit will send them to a storage like Elasticsearch or Splunk, where you can then see the logs in a nice visualized format. Again, FluentBit supports many different storage backends and to send the logs to these storage backends, FluentBit uses output plugins. So basically the input plugin knows how to transform the data of a specific format to what FluentBit can read and process. So for example, TCP input plugin knows how to parse TCP data into FluentBit data and output plugin knows how to transform the FluentBit data into what the output target understands. So Elasticsearch output plugin knows how to translate the FluentBit data into the format which Elasticsearch can read and save. And in FluentBit, you can send logs from multiple input sources to multiple output destinations. You can do this log routing pretty easily using tags. You can add tags to logs and then group them so that you can say, parse all the logs with a tag that starts with Apache with this parser, or send all the logs that match Nginx to Elasticsearch. Now, how does FluentBit actually run in a Kubernetes cluster? FluentBit gets deployed as a daemon set, which means it will run on every Kubernetes node. So when a new node gets added to the cluster, a FluentBit pod will start there immediately. So on each node, FluentBit will gather logs from all the containers on that node. In addition, it will gather metadata for those logs like pod IP, container IP, namespace and so on from the Kubernetes API. A cool feature of FluentBit is that we can suggest which parsers to be used on pods using annotations in Kubernetes configuration files. Some other advantages of FluentBit are that it has a pluggable architecture. As a log collector, it doesn't try to replace the data sources like systemd or journaldb. Instead, the goal is to integrate with different data sources and to do that, FluentBit needs to be able to talk to TCP, read logs from a file system, talk to systemd API, etc. It also has built-in security because when you are sending logs from the cluster out to the storage backends, you are talking to third-party services outside your cluster. So of course you don't want your logs to be sent in plain text. You want to use HTTPS or TLS for that connection. And it has a simple architecture which makes it easy to scale FluentBit on hundreds of servers. Because as I mentioned, FluentBit will run on each node in the cluster. Now FluentBit works in a very similar way as FluentD, which is another log processor from the same company. I have a separate video on FluentD as well. So if you know FluentD, you may be asking, what is the difference between these two? If they work the same way, which one should I use in which case? First of all, FluentBit is much more lightweight than FluentD, which means it's highly optimized for performance and low resource consumption compared to FluentD. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if you have a complex application set up, which generates a lot of logs, you want your log collector to work efficiently. So FluentBit is designed to run at high scale with low resource usage. And it's actually the preferred solution for containerized environments. However, FluentBit follows the similar philosophy as FluentD as a log processor, but also as a metrics processor. FluentBit is actually a CNCF subproject under the umbrella of FluentD, and also they're both vendor neutral. So they can run on any environment regardless the platform. And also interesting to know that there are even use cases where you can use both FluentBit and FluentD together to create a very efficient and high performance log processing architecture for your environment. Now, let me know in the comments what other technologies you want me to cover on my channel. With that, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.